Welcome to the Switchblade Sisters Social Club, a true crime podcast where two sisters exploit their worst fears for your entertainment. You're welcome. I'm Dee. And I'm Rhonda, and together we are the Sake Sisters. For more information, check out our website at www.switchbladesisterssocialclub.com or find us on Instagram and Facebook at Switchblade Sisters Social Club. Thanks for listening. Hi, this is Switchblade Sister Social Club, and my name is Dee. And you? I'm Rhonda. And we are two sisters who exploit our worst fears for your entertainment. You're welcome. I'm really excited to announce we got new merch. <gasps> Me too. We are total merch whores, especially of our own merch. <laughs> we do love um, other people's merch too, though, huh? We are do, you and I am wearing. Yeah. Me too. I took a break oh, from pajamas. We are wearing Proud Empty. Hold, oh, hold on, let me just grab a picture. Sorry. <laughs> let me just grab a picture. Sorry, D. Mm-hmm. Um. Lucky Patreons. Oh. oh. Done. Okay, cool. So okay. we're wearing our proud ND t-shirts. You want to say some more about them? Yeah. So my client, Jude Morrow, CEO of Neurodiversity Training International, we just launched some merch. Um, so with two slogans, see the good and proud ND, which you can get at neurodiversity-training.com. So we've got our t-shirts on because we are proud NDs. Yes. Yes, we are. And um, our merch, we've got sexy listener merch. Because we didn't forget you guys. You guys are so sexy. And we thought you need teachers, t-shirts, and so forth to show the world how sexy you are. Even though they can see if they're if they fully... Have eyes. <laughs> have eyes that work yes <laughs> so go and check out links in the show notes for both of those sets of merch and uh yeah your turn to tell me a story <gasps> oh okay you, i saw you earlier and you told me this one's fucking disgusting oh Worse my god the sawny bean episode from last season it is so. it makes sawny bean sound like a fucking fairy tale oh and great this, yeah i wouldn't have, i don't know if i would have chosen this on my own but okay so we all know jamie one yes, of my Jamie. oldest, longest, bestest friends, uh, VA, virtual assistant of the podcast, the most highly remunerated member of the operation. Mm -hmm. So Jamie came across this case. And when I read it, I literally texted her saying, you sick fuck. And you know what she replied? <laughs> she sent me back a gif of Dan Levy from Schitt's Creek going, why, thank you. <laughs> So you're gonna one, tell me the fucking story. I'm, I'm gonna tell you. I need to prep you. There is a visual. I'm not oh, gonna put did. it on socials. Should, uh, it too, I'm not gonna put it on socials because you know what? I don't like to see shit that I haven't been prepped for. And I think when you put it on socials, people will have maybe to hide you. it as the second image in a carousel yeah, or whatever. Yeah, because it's oh god. Okay, remember that Israel Keys photo? Oh, I hate that one. The yeah, one of his this, victim. Mm, this is kind of similar, yeah. yeah. Jamie always says it's not as bad as you think. It fucking is. <laughs> but Jamie's like hardened. Hardcore. Yes. So, let me tell you the fucking story. So, this is the story of Carl Tanzler. Do you know it? No. <gasps> okay, now remember when we did the People's Pulse at the end of season two, last episode, we asked what sort of cases did people like? And a few said old timey ones mm -hmm. this is an old timey one which is also not my sort of thing mm -hmm. but it was too good okay so what bad too good or bad i don't know okay anyway so this tale features no murders but does include a death the death isn't in itself that strange but what came before and after is more than unusual it is sick and fucking gross so like the circle the letters one there was a yeah. death oh. in there I can't get over that. The three letters. Did they know the three letter writers? Did they fucking know each other? Were they in cahoots? I have not stopped thinking and about it. That's that. our theory that there's multiple letter oh. writers. It's never been proved. So who knows? That's what I think. 
who knows but so yeah that creepy. one if you don't know so, what we're talking about it's the last episode do you know that some people listen to our podcast episodes out of order how, how does anyone do anything out of order is what I don't understand <laughs> I don't know. I was just interested to hear that. I was like, I listen to to all podcasts, even if they're standalone episodes. Yeah. In but order. anyways, some people only, do. Only thing that's okay to do out of order is like dessert, <laughs> then main course. You know, mm. otherwise I don't get it. Anyway, let me tell the story. So a man called Carl Tanzler fell in love with a young lady called Maria Elena Milagro de Hoyos. And she had tuberculosis. Um, and she was a patient at the Key West Hospital where he was a radiology technician. But his fondness grew into an obsession after she died in 1931. So Tanzler grew up in Dresden, Germany, and he was a man of many names. He was born Carl Tanzler. Um, and he had George Carl Tanzler on his German marriage certificate. He was listed as Car Carl Tanzler von Kossel on his U United States citizenship papers. Um, Carl Tanzler on his Florida death certificate and some of his hospital records were signed Count Carl Tanzler von Kossel. Um, he calls himself Count due to family connections to Augustus the Strong. And Augustus the Strong, for a little bit of history, um, lived between 1670 and 1733 and was the elector of Saxony from 1694. Boring. And also, you should yeah. say that in Germany, if you have a von or a van name, it means that you're aristocracy. Oh, didn't know that. Yeah, so the fact that he's using Van or Von or whatever, anything, implies that he's... Delusional. <laughs> In yes. This case. In this yes. case, yes. So, during his childhood, Tanzler claimed to have been visited by visions of a dead ancestor, Countess Anna Constantia Von Kossel, who revealed the face of his true love, an exotic, dark-haired woman. Um, the ghost visited him regularly, and had, he had visions of this dark-haired lady that he was destined to be with and he said the visions could be pretty intense and he claimed that one vision lasted a whole week so i don't know what this condition back in the day what they called this or what it'd be called now but it's definitely some sort of psychotic break here yes now we do have a question at the end to discuss whether or not he was a villain but we'll get to that. So Tansler moved to Australia at some point soon after the turn of the 20th century. And an autobiographical note in a story he wrote for a 1939 edition of the, oh shit, the Rosicrucian Digest states that he was living in Australia when World War I broke out. And because of his German heritage, he was placed in a concentration camp for quote unquote safekeeping. So Tansler immigrated to the United States in 1926 under the name Count Karl Tanzler von Kossel. He returned to Germany after the war where he married Doris Schaefer and they had two children in the early 1920s. Tanzler had decided to move his family to America where they settled in Zephyr Hills, Florida. And the following year, he accepted a job as a radiology technician at the US Marine Hospital in Key West. And he left his wife and children behind to move south. Then- Did he leave them, leave them or yeah, just- left, left, left left the family home, left them. So three years later, he caught his first glimpse of the woman from his childhood dreams, Elena. So um, her full name was Maria Elena Milagro de Hoyas, and she was a Cuban-American daughter of a Key West cigar maker. She was born in 1909, and she was just 17 when she married a man um, named Louis in 1926. Sadly, their marriage fell apart after Elena suffered a miscarriage. Louis moved to Miami, and left her behind in Key West. So to make matters worse, Elena was soon diagnosed with tuberculosis. And on the 22nd of April, 1930, she walked into the US Marine Hospital for treatment and met Carl Tanzler. He was 53, she was 20. He recognizes her as the apparition who had visited him since his childhood. I She's think I know this one. Oh, uh, I think, no, yeah, no. I'm if, you if, probably did th that reaction oh, implies that you probably do i just threw up a bit in my mouth yeah, so yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. so she's diagnosed with tuberculosis which is typically fatal at that time and eventually claimed the life lives of most of her immediate family members so tansler attempted to cure elena with a variety of treatments and remedies and elixirs and x-rays and other medical equipment brought to her home and he was trying all sorts of unusual treatments, desperately trying to keep her alive, which was way beyond his training as a radiologist. 
a radiologist he, assistant technician technician yeah so he showered her with gifts of jewelry and clothing and she technically she was technically married um still during this time although her husband had left her so despite panzer's best efforts elena died of tuberculosis at her parents home on the 25th of october 1931 at the time she was 22 he was 54 oh and poor girl Panzer paid for her funeral and, with the permission of her family, commissioned the construction of an above-ground mausoleum in the Key West Cemetery, which was, like, quite a big, fancy thing. It looks like a mini house. Um, he was the only one that had the key. He used to visit her every night and said that Elena's spirit will come to him as he would sit by her grave, serenading her with a favorite Spanish song. He also said that she would often tell him to take her home from the grave. So he's still having his... Don't like this. Yeah. Some years pass and there are rumors of a reclusive old man. Um, and when he does venture out, he's buying women's clothing and perfumes. This is what some of his neighbors are saying about him. Children say they spied him through the curtains dancing with a doll. And on an April evening in 1933, under a new moon, Panzler had removed Elena's body from the mausoleum. This he is two years after she died, huh? Yeah. He wore a wedding suit and he towed the coffin on a kid's toy wagon. And it's a complete shambles because the coffin is falling about. Liquid inside um, that he's used to preserve her body is spilled on his nice suit. Hansler attached the corpse's bones together. So he takes her home to his home. He attaches the corpse's bones together with piano wire and fitted her face with glass eyes. Because she's already been dead for two years. As the skin of the corpse continues to decompose, Tanzer replaces it with silk, silk cloth soaked in wax and plaster of Paris. It's just kind of just like plaster. He basically paper mache her. Mm -hmm. And as the hair fell out of her decomposing scalp, he made a wig from her hair. Um, so Tanzer fills her abdominable, abdo, abdominable, <laughs> abdominal and chest cavity with rags to keep its original form and dressed Elena in stockings, jewelry, and gloves, and kept the body in his bed using perfume to mask the odor. He used to sleep next to her every night, a corpse. Can you fucking imagine sleeping next to a corpse? I'm literally pouring myself more rum because I need it. It's, I know, this is, it's really beyond gross. Rumors also include, oh god, this is the worst bit. This is Oh, I think I know what's coming. Yeah, rumors also include that he used a tube he put a tube in her to facilitate intercourse let's move on it's generally accepted that they shared um sorry so they used to share a bed every night and they ate meals together and when Tanzo took elena's remains home he restored her in a makeshift lab that he built the lab was built in the shape of an airplane which Tanzo called elena's airship um, Tanzer's plan was eventually to use the plane to bring her back to life. According to a website called that's called All That's Interesting, Tanzer thought he could fly her high into the stratosphere so that radiation from outer space could penetrate her tissues and restore life to her to her somnolent form, quote unquote. So yeah, oh. Delusional. Well, this so, is like Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein, who yeah. put like electricity charges through the monster and yeah, maybe come back to life. Sorry, I'm clutching the hot water bottle. Oh, it's, it's awful. Her, so. It's awful. Yeah. So yeah. now we're in 1940. Elena's family hears rumors, um, and her sister, Elena's sister, brings police to Carl to Tanzler's home. Is this nine years after she died? Yes. So he's been living with a corpse for almost 10 years, sleeping next to it, having dinner with a corpse. And God knows what else. Elena's sister notified the police of her suspicions, um, which investigators soon confirmed. Tanzler was arrested and charged with, quote unquote, wantonly and maliciously destroying a grave and removing a body without authorization. When they arrive, he has dressed Elena in a kimono and she is holding a rose. There's a photo of this available. There's a veil around the bed. Everyone still thinks it's a doll until police attempt to move it and inspect closer. Can you imagine coming across that? I mean, where does that thought even come from? To paper mache a body, put glass eyes in, use wire to hold it together. It's just... I mean, I presume because he's got a bit of a medical background. It's actually fucking but... insane. 
Yeah. So nine years have passed since her death and seven years since she was removed from the mausoleum. Um, he faces grave robbing charges and the story is widely reported. Like there's a media frenzy around it. There's so much interest that the corpse is displayed and almost 7,000 people line up to view it in a funeral parlor. Do you remember right. we had this with Belle Gunness um, yeah. and like um, um, Delphine LaLaurie, the, um, which yeah. I didn't do with you, but the New Orleans uh -huh. case with the slaves um, that had been, that had died, but also the ones that had survived the fire and the abuse and whatever, that they just seem to have like public viewings. It's so weird. It's like the freak show in the circus, yeah. you know, that wasn't. I don't even... know what the point was, like morbid curiosity it's like the freak shows that wasn't even that long ago in history like i mean our mother said that in the 50s she remembers them you know it's crazy I, and also it's weird that anyone would want to go to that but anyway i um, almost understand people wanting to go to it more than i understand why they held them in the first place mm, oh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't I don't know i don't know i don't understand any of it so either. however the statute of limitations for tanza's crime had expired by the time he was arrested and he was soon released he actually received quite a bit of compassion after the fact with some women even viewing him as a hopeless albeit eccentric don't say wanted. it yeah. So, oh no! Yeah. How much fucking I know how actual badly. domestic how... Amu abuse used to be put down to being a romantic. Oh. No, it's not romantic if it's actually stalking yeah. or if it's yeah. this whatever this fucking is. Yeah, I, I know, I know. How yeah. was the statute of limitations expired if he still was living with the corpse? I guess they were taking it as like from the moment he removed the corpse from the grave. I don't fucking understand all this legal shit. I'm just telling you what I know. <sighs> So somehow he's portrayed as some sort of love struck Romeo and explains um, he was building an airship to take them to space where he thought radiation would blast, radiation blast would bring her back to life. And then in 1944, he moved back to Florida near his wife and kids who he abandoned. He writes a memoir and paints watercolor pictures of Elena. Um, his home was near his wife, Doris, um, who apparently helped to support him in his later years very forgiving lady what a um, woman i mean so, an idiot but also brave so, yeah <laughs> um so once he was separated from his obsession elena tanzer used a death mask to create a life-size effigy of her and lived with it until his death at the age of 75 in 1952 his body was discovered on the floor of his home three weeks after his death where <laughs> jamie added a sentence here <laughs> where he was hopefully at least a little bit rotten <laughs> <laughs> yes jamie then, one can only hope oh. then the closing point in case you're wondering if she was crazy for him too this is an interesting little fact oh she didn't even know he existed no oh that would be that would be a great fucking I mean, twist. It'd be horrendous but the yeah. letters from him to her were signed forever yours carl and she signed her letters your friend elena oh friend zoned yeah so oh it, ouch that story it's just, you know, it's probably one of the, we I think, one of the weirdest we've come across. Because he is he nasty? We can't accuse him of being evil, can we? I think there's some sort of mental illness there. A hundred percent. hundred percent. But evil in the Levi Belfield way? No. This isn't fucking, a serial killer. No. Is he crazy? Absolutely he's crazy. <sighs> is there... I'm guessing there's no evidence of him doing anything to any living beings. I didn't come across anything else. And... I think it was just a case of extreme obsession mixed with some sort of delusional mental health issue. I mean, but, yes, he should be. He should have had jail time for this, uh, and some sort of treatment, preferably for. Yeah, yeah, and I do wonder whether you know, like Carl Shipman, because we've also done medical ones like Carl Shipman and Doctor Donald Klein. Klein whether yeah, I can't Harold remember. Shipman, I think you said Carl Shipman. Oh, Harold Shipman and Doctor Donald Klein. I do wonder whether there's more that he has done than this. You know, is he capable of, you know, abusing of his power in the medical field? Otherwise, 
I don't know because I didn't come across it. Um, but like gonna... that disrespect to a corpse and the damage that you're doing to the family. Yeah. Th I mean, that's I not to, cool. I listened to a few different podcast episodes on this and it wasn't like Natalia Grace where you get a different view. From... <laughs> we, we need to bring up Natalia Grace. While uh, we're on the topic. Yes, we do. We're going to revisit that one. Because we, you and I took a very strong point that we were on Natalia's side, yeah. quotation marks, because there's um, no winners here and whatever, and it shouldn't be sides, unfortunately. Um, And she had had the support of this second adopted fam adoptive family, mm -hmm. the Mans, mm -hmm. who apparently the, the second season of this documentary has come out. And since then, they've fallen out with Natalia. Mm -hmm. Now, we haven't seen that documentary yet or whatever, but it's possible we might be wrong. It is possible. We're, we're not ashamed to admit it, but I want to watch it. Before, I want to watch it too. But I want to watch it before we come to a judgment. Yeah, it's also no surprise that there was going to be more twists and turns to that story mm -hmm. if they're making a whole second series of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. A whole second documentary. Cause, yeah. Um, but yeah. I still believe her age was correct. That yeah, she, and I think that came out that it was... Yeah, like I still believe that that was correct. I mean, this is a child that had so much... We didn't. We didn't have an opinion on her personality. Yeah, you know, I think I think when you've been passed around thirty homes before the age of six, there's bound to be some sort of issues. I'm not denying that she was possibly very difficult child to adopt, or whatever. But like at the end of the day, you will know that if you go through the adoption process, hopefully, that you're going to probably take on a child with issues. Um, yeah, and and again that she's a child. So mm. So we will update you. Yeah, so we'll keep you posted on that case. Um but yeah, getting getting some some really weird Google alerts coming through about oh. that case. So um, my also favorite. sorry, while I'm while I'm <laughs> updating, um Pitchfork, he's been in the media again calling Pitchfork about whether he's coming out or not. Oh fucking hate I, you know, I hate that when people that we know are going to cause harm are released why do it you know there are people in jail for petty crime that may deserve to be released and we have people like him who oh, wasn't he released and jailed again before less than a month he was yeah. free before he broke the terms of his condition was yeah. approaching girls Mm -hmm. so you know when when someone's a serial anything you got to question whether that's been fixed in them mm -hmm. before they get released you know um oh. it's so, just horrendous my sources but, yeah. my sources museumfacts.co.uk jamie <laughs> i could murder a podcast Love um, that podcast. hollywood crime scene podcast mysteries and the macabre all that's interesting horror obsessive amazing so do you know what this actually put me off my food the last few days yeah because you saw the picture yeah and you know jamie said it's not as bad as you think if i saw the picture i wouldn't think it was a corpse i think it was a very badly paper mache doll yeah um can you show me the picture again why am i asking uh, this but i've seen it before i can it, i can visualize it, it it's like something your kids would bring up from school that they made oh, <laughs> oh i just gagged terrible. a bit oh it's oh. terrible that i said that oh god uh, i mean it's terrible for both reasons. yeah if you're like six-year-old brought it home you'd be like hmm, not bad <laughs> for a okay. six-year-old so Okay, share screen. What the fuck do you share screen? Okay, here. Sorry, patrons. Close your eyes if you. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. Trigger warning. Trigger warning. Okay, so here's what she looked like before. Oh, awful. And here's what she looked like after. I don't even want to look at it. It's, it's like okay. It's close, 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 it's, close. It's almost close. bedtime. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Even, I. So she. Clear history. Clear history. <laughs> for you guys who haven't seen that, yeah, she was basically a stunner in her life died yeah. sadly very young i think you said 22 mm -hmm. and does not make a great paper mache corpse after 
10 years almost mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. after her death. Yeah. But honestly, every time I was eating the last few days, I remember that picture of a oh. Uh, yeah. Go on the Elena diet. Oh, better than Weight Watchers. Where, where you just think about that picture every time you okay, go. Okay, so people's pulse, because we need to like cleanse the palate. Come on, quick, quick, quick. Oh, people's pulse, people's pulse. Okay, people's pulse. So, okay. Now, as we've said before, we are quite a low brow podcast, and we know our audience. We tried so, to change things and you know what? Just wasn't working for us. Yeah. So, so we're going to stay our true authentic selves. Yes. So this week's question was, what's the worst thing you would do for a hundred pounds? Now I love this game. I love this game. I mm-hmm. love playing this. I hate games, but I love this game because it's such yeah. a good conversation point. Like it's a little bit like, would you rather like where you present yeah. people with two horrible scenarios and would you rather do this or mm-hmm. that? I love asking people, how much would I have to give you to do X, Y, or Z? Yeah. And it's also really good because it tests people's morals. It tests people's boundaries. You just learn a lot because I'll tell you what everyone does. Oh, I would do it for a million. No, you fucking wouldn't. A million is a four bedroom house in West London. You know, mm-hmm. you would probably do it for 10K, maybe yes. even less. Yes. So don't honest. say a million. I know. Let's Everyone be like, honestly, million. someone's got fucking cash or is like about in front to... of you, in front of you, you know, you know? In front of you. how much? Honestly, that's that's the thing. Everyone says a million, but it's not. No, let's let's really get real. Everything mm-hmm. has a price tag, you know. Mm-hmm. And you know what else? Whenever we play this game with people, they're like, oh, no, they get shocked. They get, like act shocked. And then but you're then. like, <laughs> funny though. Okay. So basically let's go through the answers. So, so this was, what would you do for a hundred pounds? Yeah. What's the worst thing you would do for a hundred? So Lucy B says, I literally would do very little for a hundred pounds. Then she says, my job would probably be the worst thing I would do. <laughs> She's got a great job. She what does she do? Associate Dean or assistant Dean of a music um i want to say university but it's like a conservatory like yeah 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 oh bless she's a boss bitch Mm -hmm. so then we got (laughs) susie susie actually sent a video which i need to oh my god okay i love it hold on i'll get on to that okay so susie says you have you had a cheeky look at my cv by any chance i'm a former corporate debt collector when i was working at gilead do you remember her last job where she wasn't allowed to go to the toilet yes um where she emailed everyone saying she had the shits so she said i was in their accounts um chasing debt which meant if companies didn't pay their invoices on time they would get a late payment fee their account would go on stop and we would eventually take them to court i took another company to court once as they had faulted on their payment plan they had set up and had 80 pound outstanding 40 pounds of that was late payment fees now that i don't work in in gilead the worst thing i would do for 100 pounds is eat raw fish i have an intolerance so if i ate raw fish i would have a rough 24 hours but i would make sure to buy those shoes with 100 pounds that be worth it can't have too many shoes wow okay she's hard work because i wouldn't be sick for 24 hours for 100 pounds no she that is intense but i like her thinking she's like and i will make sure i use that money for something long lasting that i really enjoy for longer than 24 hours yeah 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 because that's the thing that's why we say to people when they're like oh a million and then i'm like okay a million buys you this or five hundred thousand will buy you let's say a two-bedroom flat in west london that you could rent out have an income for the rest of your life a couple of grand a month income you know, you have to think about it in those terms. Yeah, what yeah. will that money do for you long term? Mm-hmm. You know, it's an investment. Yeah, that's it. That's it. It's like, what is a life changing amount for yeah. you? And, yeah. you know, so, so then, I always think, I do think of it in terms of that. What would buy yeah. me an amazing property yeah. for me to live in? What would yeah. pay off my remaining mortgage? Yes. What would pay for like a dream holiday? Because like 10K would be a dream holiday. Yes. So is it something I would do for a dream holiday? Or like, a hundred quid 10K is like... 10K is Maldives for a month out of season. Yeah. Okay. So then Susie sends me a video of Jackass. Do you remember when he's in the port loo I think Steve-O. Yeah. And they, it's like on a bungee cord thing. And yeah, the yeah. caption says anything for two, 150 quid. She said she saw this and thought of the question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember that one because that one made me throw up in my mouth. Yeah. Yeah. So this... Okay. So next we've got our fave Sam. Lazy Mule Art, and he Love says, you. He says, I'm currently thinking I'd eat a bowl of dog food. And I was like, okay, but hold on. I need more details. 
a clean dog bowl or one a dog already ate out of because those are two different things right a clean dog bowl Mm -hmm. isn't also i feel like it makes a difference if it's your dog bowl or someone else's dogs yeah there's that too then he said i never clean my dog's bowl she does a perfectly good job with her tongue which i take to mean he would eat out of a dirty dog bowl then i reply with puke emojis yeah and then he says for context i ate a couple of bonios in the pub last year for a dare bonios what's that dog food um like dog biscuits okay but that's like it probably tasted like nothing or beef or gravy or something but like they're just dog biscuits okay Uh, no but but still gross something about it still gross and then he says apart from being dry and a bit bland so they're not too bad i'd eat a bowl of them for a hundred quid no problems clean bowl or not is that for me we're talking like it needs to be property level money for me to eat dog food out of a dirty dog bowl that a dog has licked that's probably full of fur yeah i couldn't but that's one of your things i would would you eat out of a dirty dog bowl if it was lola's for a hundred if it was lola's if it was a couple of dog biscuits that were vegetarian because i am vegetarian uh-huh. i would do that for a hundred quid oh see this is for me would be one of the worst like e- the eating ones for me would be one of the worst. So I don't think for any amount of money I would be okay, able to eat meat or fish or anything. Let's talk about what 100 quid buys you. So like when you get a takeaway for two people, we're talking 30 to 40 quid, right? London prices. So that's 100 like, quid these days is not even a nice meal out for two people yeah. because once you've treated yourself to a cocktail or two and a nice bottle of wine yeah. and two quarters each, you're talking over a hundred quid, even at like a fucking basic place, like even yeah. at a nice gastro pub. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so, I would so that's, what, that's the kind of money we're talking. Yeah. A nice ish meal with alcohol yeah. at a, a fancy gastro pub. Or like two items of clothing from sweaty Betty. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, our friends at Like Mother, Like Murder. Hi, Heather and Rachel. I, okay, hold on. Oh, first she says, maybe eat something weird. I was like, how weird though for a hundo? Mm -hmm. (laughs) That word, hundo. Hundo. (laughs) Because that's the question. How weird, you know? What is weird? Um, I feel, I'm like, okay, she says, I'm like, I feel like a hundred dollars it's pounds. What? What? What's? What's more? Hundred pounds is more than a hundred dollars, oh, okay. so she'd be better off getting the pounds. Yeah, yeah. Is and it using exactly? it to come visit us. <laughs> so she says it's not that much nowadays with how expensive everything is. Yeah. That's True what that. you're making my brain rattle. And then she says making some random sandwich put together of a bunch of random ingredients that don't go together at all and is disgusting as fuck. But like not bugs or inedible stuff, so not too crazy. Okay, I'm wondering what she means by things that don't go together, like savory and sweet. Yeah, or, but Americans eat like like peanut butter and jelly, and which is delicious. And bacon and maple, which is also delicious. Yeah, so and chicken and maple on waffles, which yeah. are also delicious. Yeah, I need, I need more clarification. Yeah. Okay. So You're basically, eating something a bit weird but not totally gross. Yeah, is what so I understand. Won't make you puke. Won't make you puke. Yeah, yeah. just be un- uh, unpleasant. Yeah. So then, our dear friend. Coventry Karen says, I hate dried fruit. Something, hate is in capitals. Something just happened to me that made me cross and I shall tell you. I had a piece of carrot cake when meeting a friend for brunch and coffee. Um, She says, love carrot cake. About halfway through eating it, I realized there was bloody sultanas in it. It's a bloody travesty. So I would eat dried fruit for a hundred pounds, but only if I could clean my teeth of pips directly after. So I said, would you not do worse? you know, then eat raisins. Um, and she said, you know me in textures. I would also clean up someone else's sick. Okay, yeah. So yeah. Um, Karen has a textural issue with food. I totally get that. I but would clean see- someone's vomit for a hundred. Would you? See, I I wouldn't do that. I, I mean, I it depends. Puke. Do I have to like repaint a fucking room because they puked? Because I would puke in the process of doing that. So it's like double bad. Yeah, no, you know? I probably would too, but I would do it for a hundred quid. Okay. Okay. If it was okay. a fairly easy cleanup job, if it wasn't along the walls, it wasn't wasn't in grouting. Okay. So Isla, Isla sometimes produces gold, and sometimes she doesn't do her fucking homework. She says absolutely nothing for a hundred. We know Isla well enough to know that I'm sure it wouldn't take much convincing if there were, let's say, two fifty pound notes 
five 20 pound notes, 10, 10 pound notes. Look how good I am at math. <laughs> That's sitting in front of you. <laughs> and you're not going to do anything for it? I bet she would push over an able-bodied person. Oh, oh. And not yeah. someone old. Oh, an able-bodied, okay. Yeah. Push them well, over. Okay. Not <laughs> so that they get hurt or anything, but if she just went up to a random stranger and shoved them for a hundred, I bet <laughs> yeah, she would. Yeah. Then I said, think harder, Isla. Would you stick your hand in shit for a hundred pounds? And then I said, would you let someone piss on you for a hundred pounds? She said, absolutely no way. Now, I don't necessarily believe that. But we you know what? Many... what? I think I'll do both. Okay, so this is the thing. This is what I'm going to ask you. Would I stick my hands in somebody else's shit for a hundred? How long do you have to leave it in there? You just have to touch it. I make All right, a... and do you have I to wash your room. hands afterwards? Well, of course you have to wash your hands afterwards. Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> and I would do that. I couldn't do that. I don't, I mean, I would struggle to change another kid's nappy, you know? Yeah. So I don't think I could do that because I may puke in the process of doing that. Would I let somebody piss on me for a hundred? Yes, I would, but not if it was a sexual thing. Yeah. Because then suddenly we're in different territory. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And then it would have to be like in the shower. <laughs> I mean, you know, I can forego the shower bit. And, you know, I was having a conversation with our fave Sam and he said, see, you were lying about the fact that we don't piss in the pool, but no. This is a separate affair. We're talking, would I let somebody piss on me for money for a hundred pounds for like three takeaways? Yeah. Mm -hmm. As long as it wasn't a sexual thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, um, would I wouldn't let somebody shit on me. No, that's no. another thing. I, I would change another kid's nappy. For a hundred kids? Yeah, I would. Probably 50. 20 20 i would i wouldn't enjoy it but for 20 i would yeah um like if another mom, mom in the park came up to you and was like i just can't here's 20 can you yeah 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 20 yeah i would the <laughs> to be honest I, if someone needed me to do it i would do yeah it. i was gonna say so, in that scenario you'd be like oh, fuck, i would do it but you know if there was you'd money, be like buy me a latte after yeah. i'm done and i've washed my hands and sanitized yeah, yeah. And i mean okay well, if somebody if a parent needed help i'd fucking help them but you know if it was 20 quid i'd put yeah i'd take it um what what other things would we do that are awful for a hundred? I actually asked chat GPT today and I paraphrased the question. Ask I asked it, can you think of 10 disgusting things to do? <laughs> and then it said they don't, it had some stock response about not doing anything inappropriate. Like it doesn't do, it wasn't appropriate. <laughs> so, so then I tried to paraphrase it several times. It still came back as, as chat GPT can't, um, 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 would yeah, you eat some like, food that you really hate? Like what? What What are we talking hate? Because I don't know right. how much food I hate. Frog legs, no. Escargot, no. Right, well, there you Alligator, go. Alligator, no. What else is there that's disgusting? See, because I'm vegetarian, there's very little that's vegetarian that I, I, you know what I mean, that I hate eating. Okay, but would you eat? escargot for 100 no no I, 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 okay so meat and animals I mean, whatever. We, no. if i to do that would we're talking because that's not just doing something that's gross that's like going back on your principles and your morals mm -hmm. which would cost more yeah <laughs> so <laughs> i would only be able even thinking about it mm -hmm. literally at the half a million mark oh okay and even um, then just thinking about it i don't think i could but it would have to be like fucking life-changing would you step on, you're not going to kill them but would you step barefoot on slugs it won't kill them it won't kill them it'll just be gross for you i would do what for 100 yeah, yeah. but i don't know how Ooh. me stepping on them wouldn't kill them okay i, I don't know it's hypothetical all right okay hypothetically if i could step on a club oh, so light and airy i um, would never get over that sensation it would stay they sell me. fucking slug face cream now, don't they? I know, it's Snails. Disgusting. disgusting. Do you know how they discovered that? No. Um, Chilean, for some reason, these people that were in, I think in Chile, growing these snails, I think for escargot, they realized their hands were so soft. <laughs> <laughs> and they realized it was from the snail oh, slime. God. oh it's so gross do you know what our mother did a couple of weeks ago i don't know why she does this to me um she doesn't have the same like foibles about gross grossness she brought over snail escargot shells snail shells for Che to play with a whole fucking bag of them 
he couldn't even touch it. He couldn't even touch that shit. It had to just. It had Did to you make go. her take it home. Yeah, yeah, it had to go straight away. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, who oh. Would do that to? and then um. So okay. So what else would you do for a hundred? What's I don't know what I would do. I think I think we've covered what we would do. Would you kiss someone that you found really unattractive? Like no, because that's like uh, an old man. No, not for a hundred. No. Like with tongues. I don't know no, how to make it no, worse. No, you already no, said no. Uh, yeah, no, no. I mean, there's a price for it, but it's not going to be a hundred. Yeah, yeah. How mm -hmm. much would it? How much for that? For who? I need a visual. Uh, Gerald, Dan's dad. Uh, <laughs> oh God! Oh. Okay, so am I absolved of the guilt? Like Jim gives me permission. Yeah, yeah. Jim's on board with yeah. it. He's like, do what you got to do. This is for the fam. With tongues. Yeah, with tongues. tongues. For okay. 10 seconds, French kiss oh, for 10 seconds. Oh, grams. What can that buy me? Can I go to Paris for the weekend for a grand? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I would do it for a grand. Yeah. Yeah, same. Yeah, a grand. I'll probably I will do it for I 500. Will, I will yeah. puke afterwards. 500, no. A grand, I would do it. I, I will puke afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can puke after yeah. any of these activities. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't lose the money if you puke. It's not like... Uh, <laughs> Celebrity, yeah, celebrity like, yeah, out yeah. Of here or whatever. Do you know what? I think we just fill up this season with just raising the price every week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what you do for two fifty next week? I know because I'd be interested. I would love to know what the, what our listeners would do for like yeah. half a million. Because I presume that would be enough to buy any one of our listeners either a house, pay off their mortgage. Yeah, probably if they're up north, buy several oh, houses. So you don't think we've got wealthy listeners? <laughs> Why? Because I think they have mortgages? No, because you think that 500 grand would pay off their mortgages. We don't know. They might live in mansions. They might. <laughs> I don't know. Tell us if you do. We'll come and do a live recording one weekend. So, yeah, I can. I want to say hello to Claire Clarison because I bumped into her in the street today. I want to bump into Claire in the street. Oh, she's so nice. You should come have <laughs> coffee with us. because she. I want to. She basically lives in, in my area and it was just so nice bumping into her because we had a coffee a couple of months ago, probably fucking longer than that now because time goes so fast and um, she's absolutely adorable. Oh, I want to meet her. Yeah. So I want to meet all the listeners. I know. Well, listen, maybe, can we do a poll? Mm -hmm. um, For a mutually inconvenient place to meet. Like, would people come to London? Because I know we got listeners all over the place. Would they genuinely be interested in coming for a piss up with us? Um, like these are my questions in my head. Would they? Do they do like you, us? <laughs> do you genuinely want to come down? Would it? Would it have to be in London or somewhere else that's like mutually inconvenient for everyone? What do you know? What we need to do. And daytime, evening, week. Weekend. I'll tell you well, what we need to do. We need to tie this in with Crime Con. Yeah. That's the fucking ideal. Maybe we do. Maybe we do one like the day before in London. Like, mm -hmm. come down to London a night earlier, which is much yeah. easier for everyone. Yeah. Deal. All right. Organize maybe we it. do that. I'm going to have a little look so, at where we can do that. Should we do that somewhere near Crime Con then? I suppose no, that makes sense. It's fucking East London. That's the other side of the world. No one wants I to go to East London except for Okay. <laughs> at least if it's like central ish. <laughs> yeah. Regardless of where people are staying. So I'm going to do a follow up of this and I'm going to raise it to a grand. No, I think you should make it interesting and raise it to like 250. That's a quarter mil. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Let's because raise the for, stakes. For two, for a quarter of a million, I will compromise my morals. For a quarter of a million, I would call me a prostitute. I would have sex with someone I found physically ah, unattractive. I was going to say, would you give someone a hand job? You know? Okay. No, okay. Okay, yeah, I mean, yeah, quarter of a million, come on. You like, know. come on. Like I said, if that's a life-changing amount, so... It's a one-bedroom flat in West London. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you... Everything is according to property prices. In yeah. Life. But it's because, true. Because that's what, you know, it was one of the best investments, and then it will give you a return. You know, you can rent it out. Yeah. You don't got to work. <laughs> so, um, yeah, 100% I would do that. You know what? I tell you what, though. If you ask somebody that question... Would you fuck someone ugly? Oh, don't say, oh, it's not terrible to call somebody ugly. Okay, so break. 
Okay, okay. Fuck someone that you don't like. Yes. Or you okay, find that attractive. Like, if, if you if you ask somebody, would you fuck somebody that you're, let's say, repulsed by for whatever reason, for, for a quarter of a million, everyone's like, no, no, I would Yes, you, a lot Come of you. On. For like. Think about it for a second. What, Think door to door, it. an hour of discomfort and nausea, and then some puking afterwards, but then you get like a fucking That's all. house. <laughs> the bath full of bleach or whatever but then you get a house or whatever <laughs> like yes you yeah sorry so, if you say no to that i'm gonna think you're an idiot you know i hope this is the one episode our parents never listen to <laughs> it's not the one episode they don't listen to <laughs> what episode are we on like 45 it's the 45th episode they're not listening to. so thank god for that <laughs> What, the one where I said I'd be a prostitute for a quarter of a million? <laughs> yes. Hi, Dad, if you are listening. I think the only one he's listened to properly so far is the one with Louis, Louis Ferranti. Uh, yeah. Hi, Louis. So that concludes the People's Pulse for today. Hi! Just for those who are not paying for our Patreon, why not? It's sign up for any amount, and then you get to see what I'm holding up now, which is Lola the French Bulldog. <laughs> she's so tolerant. Because she's old. <laughs> she's like, uh, <laughs> all the time. But yeah, so, she's been here the whole time, throwing up was... in her mouth about your oh, story. But let's gosh. not go back there. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We cleared the palette. Yeah. We had the so palette So that, that was today's episode. Um, I already know what next week's topic is. I'm not going to tell you. I'm just going to tell you. It's going to fuck with your oh, head. Oh, no. <sighs> yeah. When are we, when are we going to rebrand? <laughs> so just a lifestyle podcast. <laughs> yeah. And this week I am also going to be, um, I think I'm going to do it after we record. Cause I always get a bit of a buzz on when we record after we record, I'm going to record some drunk real housewives. Okay. Good. Because we need some more. Um, but yeah, do the poll. Find out, ask some questions about where people... Ask them if they would come to London a day early for a meetup the night before mm -hmm. Crime Con. We'll do that. That'd be awesome because you know why? <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be so much fun because then we'll get to know everyone before Crime Con. Yeah. And Good. then it's more fun. And we can also remind them of our code which gives them 10% off. What's our code? Um, for CrimeCon, it's SSSC. Love you. Love you guys. Sexy listeners. Go get your sexy listener merch. <laughs> so the world can know that. Well, they already know that you're sexy. They won't know what you're listening to until you wear <laughs> the t-shirt. Okay, love you. Bye. Bye. You. Bye, bye, bye. Hey there. Thanks for being a loyal listener. Do you need a new website or want to boost your social media performance? Or do you hate podcast editing? You've tried optimizing your website and social media channels, but you're still not getting the listeners, downloads, and engagement you want? We, the Safi sisters, love helping people with tasks that they hate. We know a thing or two about podcasts, websites, and social media, and we love working with other podcasters and business owners. So why not head over to SwitchbladeSistersSocialClub.com and go to our work with us section. We believe in collaboration over competition. A rising tide raises all ships. Bye.